Okay, let's read some sources. I have letter from the Committee of Freedmen, source number one here, as well as a copy of the big bookmark to help me make sense of this source while we read. Before we get started, just a reminder, our purpose for reading is to answer this central question, was Reconstruction mostly a story of triumph or tragedy? I'm going to start with the attribution and the headnote using the top part of the bookmark to think about who created the source, when and where it was created, and why the source might have been created. It says, Attribution, adapted from a letter written by the Committee of Freedmen, Edisto Island, South Carolina, on October 20th or 21st, 1865. So we know that the type of source here is a letter. And we know who created this letter is the Committee of Freedmen. So committee is an organized group. And when I read freedmen, I know that this is referring to um, formerly enslaved African-American men. So an organized group of formerly enslaved men who are writing where? In South Carolina or from South Carolina and when on October in October of 1865. So if we think about our timeline from day one, uh, this is only a few months after the end of the Civil War. But we still don't know very much about um, this committee of freedmen and why they might have been writing or who they were writing to. So with a partner, read the head note and circle any additional information that helps you to answer these questions here at the top of the bookmark. Now it's time to read the source or the actual letter that the committee of freedmen wrote. And while we read this source, we're just gonna focus in on this second bullet point. What parts of the source tell you what the author or people in the text think, what they want, or what they experienced? When you find that information, we're going to underline it. Let's do the first and the last paragraphs together. You can do the middle two paragraphs with a partner. It says, General, it is with painful hearts that we the committee address you. General, we want homesteads. We were promised homesteads by the government. I'm going to underline those two sentences because that's something that they want and something they experienced. So the, this committee, they want the homesteads or the land that they were promised. They want the land that the government promised. If it does not carry out the promises its agents made to us, if the government now takes away from us all right to the soil we stand upon, we are left in a more unpleasant condition than before. I'm gonna underline that too because it's part of what they're experiencing. If you, the government, do not give us the land that you promised, you're gonna leave us in a worse state than it, you left us before the Civil War. With a partner, Read through the second two, the middle two paragraphs, and underline any additional information that tells you what the Committee of Freedmen think, want, or experience. Okay, last paragraph. It says, General, we cannot remain here in such a condition. That's what they think. If the government permits them, them is white landowners. So I'm just going to put whites. If the government permits them to come back, we ask it to help us to reach land where we, sh where we shall not be slaves nor forced to work for those who would treat us as such. Your obedient servants on behalf of the people, Henry Brown, Ishmael Moultrie, and Yates Simpson. So this is what they want. We ask the government, we want the government to help us reach land 
where we shall not be slaves or forced to work for those who would treat us as slaves. So basically, we or they want the government to prevent them from having to work like slaves. It's connected to the ideas that they mentioned earlier, right? Go, you know, they're saying to the government, you promised us land, you haven't given it to us. If you give it back to the white landowners, then we're going to be forced to work for them. And those people were our enslavers. They are going to treat us like slaves. So we want your help to prevent this from happening. With a partner, read through question number one. We're now after you read. And discuss what does this letter from the Committee of Freedmen help you understand about the tragedies or triumphs of Reconstruction? Was Reconstruction more of a tragedy or more of a triumph? And how do you know? Okay, now it's time to think about how reliable or helpful this source is for understanding whether Reconstruction was a tragedy or a triumph. And just a quick reminder, there are some questions on the back of our bookmark to help us decide whether or not the source is reliable. We'll start with um, one reason the source is reliable is because of the people who created it. So the Committee of Freedmen were insiders about the experience of freed people during Reconstruction, and they are in a position to know about the issues because they experienced it firsthand. So I'm going to say authors were insiders about the experiences of freed people during Reconstruction. You could also say that they experienced this firsthand, that they were there. Come up with one other reason why this source is reliable for thinking about whether Reconstruction was a triumph or a tragedy. All right, let's go to one reason that this source might be unreliable. Um, and I think the question that's helpful here is what can this source tell us or what can't we learn from this source? Um, although this source tells us a lot about what this group wants and what has happened to them, it doesn't necessarily tell us about the experiences of other freed people. So we don't know if all freed people were promised land and then didn't get it. Um, we also don't know what happened after this letter was sent. Did the government do what this committee asked and protect these people or did they ignore them? So I'm going to say um, we can't know or we don't know from this source if all freed people had the same experience. All right, last step, number three. It says, box the parts of the source that help you think about the central question. I'm going to box uh, what we've already underlined up here in the first paragraph, where the authors talk about wanting homesteads that the government promised them. And if they don't get them, they'll be in a worse situation. This helps me think about the central question because uh, the government promised to give land to freed African-American men and women. And this is telling me that the government hasn't done this yet. And if that's the case, then this is a tragedy of reconstruction. The government not fulfilling 
or following through with its promise. See if there's anything else that you can box in this uh, source that helps you decide whether or not reconstruction is mostly a triumph or a tragedy. When you find it, box it.